Hello everyone, I'm with me, and today we're going to be responding to a video called LGBTQI plus and Christianity. Is it compatible? All right, man. What do you got? Hey guys, Ben here. I uh, just got done watching a debate uh, last night, so I guess I didn't just get done watching it. Between James White and, I can't say his first name, Mr. Codrington in South Africa. It's a pretty recent debate, and it was just, it, it really struck me how anti-biblical, ah-biblical, ah-historical, and what say, ah, I mean, like, you know, an atheist, a being the, like, the negation. So, a-biblical, a-historical. I don't think those are words, but I digress. Carry on. And it's just, he, when I see this in the church and people that are saying that they're Christians and that this has always been, it's, their arguments are so anachronistic anachronistic, belonging to a period other than that being portrayed. Interesting word. Did you use it correctly? You did talk about history. I don't know. I hate it when people are unscripted. They try so hard to work their present theory and this idea that comes out of our modern culture back into scripture. Yeah, isn't that hilarious how as a society, we modernize and we slowly lose the bad things within our society. The outdated morals and outdated ideas. Like the shit scripture you love so much. Also, he used the word correctly. Sweet. Plus one for this guy. It's painful to watch, but it's really the wickedness of it. It's wicked to advocate for the LGBT? It does say in your description... Quote, are LGBTQI plus people and Christianity compatible? If we use God's word, then the answer is no. Ouch. It's just astounding. And the way that Mr. Codrington does it with such arrogance was, I guess, shocking because he claims to be a Christian, an evangelical Christian, and he went through the saying, you know, how he's been fired for standing up for what he believes and he can't believe the shallowness of Christianity. And he, you know, he starts with, well, I understand why people struggle with this, you know, because they think it's a gospel issue and, you know, they think that it's a big deal. But it's really not, even though 4,000 years of Old Testament history and roughly 2,000 years of New Testament history have told us that it has been a problem. And it has never been accepted widely by the church for good reason. Oh boy, what's the good reason? When he goes back and he does the same thing that Matthew Vines does, that every liberal Christian does. Oh shit, he said liberal. I think I know what his political views are now. They go back and they say, okay, well, we know that there's nothing wrong with being gay, lesbian, transgender, queer, whatever... The list is up to now and 5,000 different genders. There's nothing wrong with that. And we know there's nothing wrong with it because the Bible doesn't say there's anything wrong with it. In fact, here's the problem. We've been misinterpreting the Bible this whole time. We got it wrong. It wasn't until the 1960s and the sexual revolution took place that we finally started to get it right. Yeah, it happens a lot, especially with the women's rights and African-American rights. And let's not forget about the Indians. Misinterpreting the Bible is so common. I'm surprised the damn thing hasn't been thrown out already. Yeah, revolutions usually take place when people are being discriminated against. It's sadly all too common. History repeats itself many times, yet people still seem to forget. Yep, see, those those people in the past, the the leaders of the Reformation, the, the early church fathers, all the people at the councils, they got it wrong. Or they just didn't mention it because it wasn't a problem to them. That's why they never mentioned it. No, they didn't mention it because they already knew it was wrong intuitively. And they knew it was wrong intuitively due to society constantly demonizing gay people. Without that constant source of negativity, you wouldn't intuitively think being gay is wrong, because there's actually nothing wrong with it. It violates God's binary creation with man and woman. That's why God made it in the first place. Hey, wait a minute. You know, he, he just keeps dying. And this is the same thing. They all, all liberal 
Christians. Oh, jeez, I hate that so much. You see the quote he did just there with his hand? You know, the little quote gesture? He's implying the Christians he's talking about aren't real Christians. You know, my friend who is a Christian says you aren't a real Christian because you're discriminatory, yet you say she isn't a real Christian because she's not. Who the fuck do I believe? Stop with this nonsense. If someone self-identifies as Christian, they're probably Christian. That's like me seeing an atheist commit a crime, say murder for example, and then saying they aren't a real atheist. That doesn't make any sense. Whatever, carry on. I, I noticed this and it was really... No, no, nobody ever touches on this, because they'll say, well, I I support the lesbian, the gay, transgender, the LBTQI, right? The whole list of them. This, I support all of that. But when they get into an argument, the only thing they argue about is homosexuality. That's it. And they never talk about the transgender part. Because if, you if you're going to say that you support LGBTQ, the T's in there, the Q's in there. That means you support all of the acronyms, every single letter in there. So a transgender person who says, I was born in the wrong body, you have to support that, which in essence you're saying, God made a mistake. He put this person in the wrong body, made them the wrong gender, the wrong sex, and now they are fixing God's mistake. But people don't ever argue that because they know that if they get to that point, there's going to be no way they can argue for it. I'm getting a bit of a headache. Okay, so, if God makes someone gay when God doesn't even like gay people, did God make a mistake? No. God doesn't make any mistakes? Then why the fuck is it any different here? You can't choose to be gay, and you can't choose to be transgender. But let's actually go deeper into the argument. Why would someone feel like they're in the wrong body when God doesn't make any mistakes? Where do these feelings come from? Do they come from Satan? Okay, Satan. Why? What is the matter with being gay or transgender? What the hell is the big deal? Why did God make it a sin to be gay or transgender, when you can still follow his word perfectly fine otherwise? Why is it a sin to be gay? Why would God make it a sin? You know, I mean, we're one, two presidential elections away, one or two, you know, switching of the House and the Senate from just full-on pagan idolatry in this nation anyways. Whoa, 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 pagan idolatry? What the fuck? Just the ease and the willingness of people to accept this with zero historical backing. And they just, they do it with such pride. And you could see Mr. Corrington in his, his closing statements. And I think James White did a good point of pointing this out. He did a good job. Um, you know, he says, oh, well, you know, he spends most of his time saying, there, yeah, there's biblical support. Yeah, there's this. Yeah, there's that. And, you know, he goes back and he reinterprets Leviticus 18. No, it's not about, you know, he does the same thing. It's about gang rape. It's about orgy. It's about something that nobody believes, that no scholars hold up, that if you read commentaries, none of them will say that. But that's what it's about because we need it to be about that, to support our argument. That's the sad part about morality. It has to change with the times. That's why objective morality doesn't work, because when society starts changing, so does what it defines as moral. If the religion won't change with the times, it will phase out. Unless, of course, it rules over other countries, in which case uh, change would be a lot harder. That's why we shouldn't establish a religion in this country. So then he does, you know, kind of does that, you know, it's kind of half supports his argument. He reinterprets all the parts that he needs to, and then he gets to the end. And that's when you find out what it's really about. These mean Christians, the church has been, the whole closing statement is just a straw man about how bigoted and mean the church has been. And he puts up the caricature, you know, we've been putting these people, and then he just, all the supposed biblical argumentation and all the references and all his stuff just flies out the window because it's all emotion. I got fired for supporting these and the big meanies, and, we, and it's just, <laughs> it's what I see on social media. Well, did he actually get fired specifically for advocating LGBT rights? If he did, there's no strawman to be had. If he hasn't, then clearly he's making shit up for the sake of his argument. And that is indeed wrong. 
Arguing from emotion, however, isn't all that bad, especially when the emotional argument is factual and actually makes sense. Is it emotional to use that as an argument? Yeah, but it's also factually correct. If, of course, he actually did lose his job for advocating LGBT rights. I mean, if you're really going to do this and we're just going to open the floodgates, which is what happened, and it is happening, you know, the LGBTQI blah blah blah, that's going to have the P in there pretty soon. If it doesn't already, it does in some people's minds, right? For pedophilia. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Children can't consent, but adults can. What do you not understand? We specifically advocate for the rights of adults to do what they want in the bedroom with other consenting adults, not with children. Because the Bible doesn't explicitly say that we can't have relations with children. You know, the Bible doesn't specifically say you can't have sex with a minor. It's not in there specifically, right? I mean, if we need explicit passages to do this, and I could find examples in history where this has happened. Just like Mr. Cordington did with his argument. And it's just a slippery theological slope to run down. It doesn't explicitly say that, yet it condemns murder and homosexuality. It specifically says that, according to you. Isn't that a little concerning to you? Why does the Bible do that? Why does the Bible condemn murder and homosexuality, yet say nothing about pedophilia? Surely murder is something that we agree upon is intuitively wrong. Hmm. I don't even really know how to describe it. The the words. I mean, this is Rome. It's first century Rome. That's what we're turning into. You know, the Pax Americana, the American peace, where it's just shocking. And the similar, the parallels between, you know, politicians of the day saying it's fine for you to practice your religion behind closed doors. But when you come out into the people into the rest of us. You have to accept all of this. And that's like Rome. You can keep your religion, you can worship your God, but when you come out into public, you have to accept all of this stuff, all these other gods, all these other practices. What other gods? What other practices? You can still accept and believe your religion. That's one of the main points of the First Amendment. Which is why Judaism was the only religion that got a pass, because Jew Jewish people were like, no, we're not doing that. They'd rather die a painful death, give their life, than give in to that. Well, yeah, that's not good at all. People shouldn't be put to death for their beliefs. That's one of the main points of the First Amendment. I mean, I wish we had that kind of strength today. The Christian church doesn't have that in America because the Christian church is just a name for a group of people in a political party. That's what it's boiled down to. Being a Christian means you vote Republican and you're a conservative. That's what it means in America. That's not what it actually means, but that's what it's become. Uh, sure. Are you okay? Do you need a hug? So I know I kind of spun off on a little tangent there, but is homosexuality wrong? Yes, it is. It absolutely is. Okay, but why? And the only way around that is to start with the idea that it's not, and then proof text your way through the Bible by reinterpreting verses that have never said that ever in 2,000 years of New Testament history. And none of the scholars will say that. None of the commentaries will say that, unless it was something that kind of came about by a liberal person in the 1960s. But they don't have any historical proof. I will admit. You do a good job explaining why you think Christianity and the LGBT aren't compatible. However, you keep othering people. You keep othering other Christians by saying words like real Christian, as if I haven't heard that from a million other Christians on a million other beliefs. It's almost as if morality is subjective and people follow what makes more sense to them. This guy has a really long video, and I cut a lot of parts out because some of the parts made points but didn't expand upon those points. And I felt it was unnecessary to address them, and he didn't explain why. But I do understand that wasn't the point of his video. Even so, there are some things I still disagreed with, and, uh, well, I hope you enjoyed my response. And I hope you guys enjoyed my video. <laughs> Please leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want more content like this. If you want to support the channel even more, Patreon link in the description down below. I'm also excited to announce that patrons will be getting videos a day early. This will start next week. And, uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. Buh bye bye
Ugh.